What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com taking a look at the new version of RBD Lab. So if you remember RBD Lab is the physics simulation add-on for Blender that allows you to quickly set up all of your rigid bodies, um, fracture objects, really set everything up for like breaking things in Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download RBD Lab from the Blender market. Um, remember that currently this is on sale through the end of the day today as a part of the Blender Market Black Friday sale. So if you do want to get this at a discount, um, you can do that by going to the cgessentials.com slash RBD Lab. But what I wanted to focus on in this video is I wanted to focus on the changes in the 1.1 update. So they've rolled out a new version and they've really kind of revamped the way that the tool looks and works um, to a certain degree. Um, it still works um, in a lot of the same ways, but I think they've made everything a little bit more uh, understandable. So what it's done is it's kind of broken things up into more of like a linear style workflow. So I think probably the easiest way to look at this is just to open up the new version and let you take a look. So um, remember before with this uh, with uh, this tool, basically on the right hand side of the page, you just had everything like this big long menu like this. Well, now what they've done is they've broken everything up um, so you can control the fractures, the physics, the particles, and the smoke um, in separate tabs like this. So what that does is that allows you to focus on one thing at a time because that's really how this works, right? You like fracture something, then you add physics, then you work with the particles and the smoke. And so now let's say that we wanted to break this wall up into some different parts and pieces, right? So all the tools that were in there before are still in there. So like the subdivision, the paint, um, and the annotate. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to break this wall. So what we're going to do is we're just going to annotate this wall right here like this. And then we're just going to set this to self fracture point being the annotation pencil. Um, all of these settings should be pretty much the same. We can click on the button for fracture. So what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to fracture this wall right here based on where we had marked it up. So notice how, however, there's some things down below where you can either apply the fracture or you can add extra details, which is a new feature. Or at least if it's not a new feature, it's something that was kind of hidden before. But for example, let's say I wanted to add some subdivision to this, right? So what I could do is I could up the subdivision. And when I do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna subdivide these objects like this. And notice how you can also add noise in here. So let's say I was to jump this up to like 0.4. Notice how it's gonna add some noise to this uh, fracture that it's creating right here. So then you can just come in here and click on the button for fracture once you've clicked on apply. And so once we apply that, notice how our wall has been fractured. And so if we were to click the play button right now, notice how nothing is going to happen, right? Because we have to move on to the next step. The next step is gonna be the physics step. So if I jump into the physics step, remember this is where we can add rigid body actives um, to our object. And notice how what this has done is this has selected this, uh, this collection for our cube low right here. So you can select different collections in here in order to make the changes. So now, um, let's say for example that we wanted this wall to have rigid body actives. Well, I can just click on the button for add rigid body actives like this. Well, now if I click on play, my wall's going to fall down, right? And we need to make sure that this, uh, this floor also is a rigid body. We're just going to set this to a passive rigid body. But now, this is going to fall down. So um, we've added the rigid body actives. And remember that we want to add the option for deactivation. And so we can do that by clicking on update. But now if I click play, nothing's going to happen until something acts on this object. And so notice how there are options in here for things like the glue on the wall that holds everything together. Um, so what I want to do is I want to bring this glue down to something like 50 and add a glue constraint. So remember we've done that before. Um, but again, this is just a little bit easier, I think, by breaking everything up into these tabs. But now let's say that we were to shoot like a sphere through this wall, right? So let's just add a sphere. I'm gonna scale it down. All right, so just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna use a wind effect to kind of shoot this through the wall right here. Well, notice how we have the glue in here, and that means that the wall is going to um, stick together a little stronger maybe than we wanted it to. So maybe I'm gonna take my glue and set it to maybe like 10 or something like that, and then we'll update this. But now, if I was to shoot this through the wall, 
Notice how it's actually going to shoot a hole in the wall, which is fun, but not necessarily what we want. So maybe we just want it to be a little bit bigger. So maybe something like this, which may mess my forces up. Here we go. So we're going to bring our glue down to one just for this example. I'm going to click on play. Notice how what that's doing is that shooting this ball through this wall right here. So we've got our first step and our second step set up, which is our physics and our uh, We've got our fracture in our physics. So now what we want to do is we want to set up our particles. And um, notice how it says it's recommended to bake first. So this is the nice thing about this new version is it tells us, hey, these are some of the steps you want to take to get a better result. So we probably scroll down and click on the button to bake. And really, I just want to bake probably we'll call it 75 frames. So we're going to click on 75 right here. And we go ahead and set our animation to be 75 frames long as well. And so then we want to bake that. So we're going to click in here and we're going to click on bake physics. So that's going to go in here and that's going to pre-calculate our frames like this so that we're going to get a good result there. Well, then we're just going to jump over into the particles and notice how um, this allows us to create debris from our objects. So if we click on create debris right here, what that's going to do is that's going to create this debris object that's going to show up inside of our scene. What it does is when this breaks, it generates these little pieces that come out of here, which you can then adjust using like the size slider, you can adjust the randomization, other things like that. And then you can click on the update button right here, but you can use this in order to quickly generate debris coming out of our wall, as well as we can also add dust and smoke. So if we were to add dust right here. All right, so then you can also jump into the tab, um, the smoke tab, and you can add smoke to your scene as well. And I'm gonna keep this in Eevee when I do this, um, just so this doesn't take forever to render. But if I was to click play right here, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to basically simulate this entire scene. Um, and it's gonna have the wall breaking, um, it's going to have the different particles in here, as well as you're going to have some smoke that's going to be included in here as well. So you can download RBD Lab from the link on this page. Remember, through the end of the day today, RBD Lab is going to be on sale. So leave a comment below. Let me know what else you'd like to see from this add-on. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.